I don't want to hear it, Wild fans. I know the Minnesota fans that are on this channel that tune into these videos once in a while have a great opportunity to come into the comment section of this video and start trashing on this guy, but I don't want you to do that. Y'all take your dubs, hold them up high, and carry on about your day. Sure, you can stick around and watch this video if you want, but I would be somewhat disappointed if the comment section just evolved into a spiraling down, out of control mess of, oh, Jesper Wallstead is better, the Minnesota Wild are better, the Wild did this and they did it better. Because sure, today we're talking about a guy that the Red Wings ended up taking before Jesper Wallstead in the 2021 NHL Draft. The first goalie taken off the board, Sebastian Kosa, out of the WHL and the Edmonton Oil Kings. Now, I don't think I need to go into an entire history lesson over here as to the story we've chronicled that in many videos throughout the past two years between these two guys, Wallstead and Kosa, Wallstead and Kosa, two guys that coulda, shoulda, woulda, maybe had... Franchise-altering potential. Wallstead had been noted since he was like 15 towards potentially being an amazing goalie prospect, and Kosa exploded in the year of the draft, and he has a profile that Steve Eiserman probably would have said has a higher ceiling, which is why they took him ahead of Wallstead. But either way, it's been a somewhat of an up-and-down sort of career to start out Sebastian Kosa and his pro stint. He hasn't made that transition into the AHL like Jesper Wallstead did, where Wallstead has immediately become like one of the better goalies in the entire American Hockey League, and now he's probably going to become an NHL player sometime soon. When it comes to Kosa, though, we've made a few videos over the past few months talking about his transition from WHL to AHL to ECHL. Long story short, he was a very good WHL goalie when he was drafted. It was why he was taken so highly in that draft in the first place. The season after, he kind of regressed a little bit, was still one of the top goalies in the league, but the entire league scoring as a whole went up, and as a result, the goaltending across the board was reduced as well. But this season, Sebastian Kosa has only played three games with the AHL's Grand Rapids Griffins, and to be fair, his numbers are not looking great at all. 783 save percentage, 557 goals against. It's a really bad sample size, but at the same time, the numbers themselves are really bad too. This, however, should not be considered the main meat and potatoes as to what Kosa has done because he has played mostly this season for the Toledo Walleye in the ECHL. The third tier pro men's league here in North America. Kosa, at the 35 game marker of the season, has a 2.50 goals against and a 9.11 save percentage. He's 20 and 13 on the year with four shutouts. Now, in isolation, just saying, okay, a 9.11 save percentage is not game shattering, fantastic, absolute pinnacle, peak goaltending performance of all time type of good, but it's pretty good. It's good enough, I guess you could say, especially for a guy that was sort of in that up and down transition period from the AHL, NHL, and ECHL, but it gets a little bit better, actually a lot better, when you acknowledge what Kosa has done in his most recent stint. In his last three games played, Sebastian Kosa has only allowed two goals, he's made 82 saves, and he's got a 976 save percentage. In his last six games, Kosa has only allowed three goals, so there are three shutouts in there too. 164 saves, and he's got a 982 save percentage in those prior six games. Furthermore, to back everything up, we're going to go back to the Steve Eiserman presser from yesterday that we had talked about. Shout out to the Grindline guys, by the way. This is what Steve Eiserman said when it came to Sebastian Kosa. He's trending in the right direction. Stevie Y put him in the ECHL to play a ton and get a challenge. And challenge indeed, if I do say so myself. I mean, the save percentage says it all right there, doesn't it? Now, of course, a 9-8-something save percentage is probably not going to be sustainable for the good chunk of any player's career, let alone an extended part of one season, but just seeing what Kosa has been doing recently is giving a lot of Red Wings fans more hope for the future. To help us out, we're going over onto ToledoWallet.com and reading this article from two days ago. Sebastian Kosa notches his fourth shutout in the Toledo Walleye's 13th consecutive win. This article is written by Kaylin Denker, and it'll be available in the description, but we're going to go out there and read a bunch of this because since it's on the Toledo Walleye website, it's a lot more appropriate, I feel, to just kind of read what's on there rather than if it was published in a newspaper or in some other journalistic platform, but... 
After going nearly 50 minutes with no scoring and just two penalties, Brandon Hawkins netted a picture-perfect game winner in Toledo's 1-0 shutout over the Wheeling Nailers. So, pretty good game there for Sebastian Cosa, 1-0 on the final decision. Sebastian Cosa, via this article, earned his career-high seventh straight win in Toledo, along with his fourth shutout of the season. He was given the first star of the game with 23 saves and... Realistically, I mean, you really want to see this sort of a rhythm establishing itself back in Kosa's game. I'm not going to go out there and pretend that the ECHL's Toledo Walleye are 100% relying on Kosa, because you also have John Lethman, who's been very good for this team, too. He's got a 208 goals against average and a 927 save percentage, but Kosa and Lethman have been pretty good for this team the past little while here, which of course is good for Red Wings fans, because these guys are both technically Red Wings property. Now, at the same time, what also stands out to me is just how good Toledo has been this season, just in general. They're first in the Central Division in the ECHL. They are, what is that, second in the entire league in goals against. Now, of course, part of that has to do with the goaltenders. Them being so good contributes to the goals against number, but... This team, just in general, seems to be sort of in that same territory that the Edmonton Oil Kings had been in when the Sebastian Cosa hype train was started out in the WHL over there. The Walleye are the top team in the Central right now, and one of the top teams overall. They're second overall, actually, behind Idaho. So this is a powerhouse of a team that is getting it done, they're getting points, they're scoring goals, and Cosa happens to be a part of that. Which is great! because you want to see players succeeding in winning environments, and Kosa getting a whole bunch of shutouts and wins in a row is definitely helping in that respect. It is just kind of interesting to me how Kosa is still playing on a very good team. I'm sort of intrigued as to seeing how he'd be able to transition if the team in front of him wasn't so great. Like, what if you give him all that turmoil? Of course, it's probably not a good question to be asking, because the guy is only 20 years old. You don't want to set the guy up for failure by putting him in a losing position over and over again, but... At the same time, maybe getting him used to a winning culture like he had in Edmonton with this Toledo Walleye team will set him up even better in the future when he inevitably becomes a Red Wings guy. Or, knock on wood, he becomes a Red Wings guy. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about Sebastian Kosa and his recent stretch of games played. Again, a 9 2 save percentage in his last six games. That's kind of nuts over there. You can't go out there and expect him to uphold that. I mean... Take a look at the goals against, too. Three goals against in six games played a .5 goals against number. He's allowing a goal every two games, and that's really kind of nuts when you think about it. It's just above and beyond amazing type of production. But at this point in his career, with Jesper Wallstead doing as well as he is, and with Kosa already turning 21 by the end of the year, you kind of have to hope that he's really putting it together in the best way possible in the ECHL, so that that AHL transition is a lot more seamless than we had seen earlier this year. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Red Wings and Sebastian Kosa, how he's been progressing so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. Scrolls 99. And bye.